The angel of the Lord declared unto Mary, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. And the Word was made flesh. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech thee, O Lord, thy grace into our hearts, that we to whom the incarnation of Christ thy Son was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. I am the salvation of the people, says the Lord. Should they cry to me in any distress, I will hear them, and I will be their Lord forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who founded all the commands of your sacred law upon love of you and of our neighbor, grant that by keeping your precepts we may merit to attain eternal life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Proverbs. Like a stream is the king's heart in the hand of the Lord. Wherever it pleases him, he directs it. All the ways of a man may be right in his own eyes, but it is the Lord who proves hearts. To do what is right and just is more acceptable to the Lord than sacrifice. Haughty eyes and a proud heart, the tillage of the wicked is sin. The plans of the diligent are sure of profit, but all rash haste leads certainly to poverty. Whoever makes a fortune by a lying tongue is chasing a bubble over deadly snares. The soul of the wicked man desires evil. His neighbor finds no pity in his eyes. When the arrogant man is punished, the simple are the wiser. When the wise man is instructed, he gains knowledge. The just man appraises the house of the wicked. There is one who brings down the wicked to ruin. He who shuts his ear to the cry of the poor will himself also call and not be heard. The word of the Lord. Guide me, Lord, in the way of your commands. Guide me, Lord, in the way of your commands. Blessed are they whose way is blameless, who walk in the law of the Lord. 
Guide me, Lord, in the way of your commands. Make me understand the way of your precepts, and I will meditate on your wondrous deeds. Guide me, Lord, in the way of your commands. The way of truth I have chosen, I have set your ordinances before me. Guide me, Lord, in the way of your commands. Give me discernment that I may observe your law and keep it with all my heart. Guide me, Lord, in the way of your commands. Lead me in the path of your commands, for in it I delight. Guide me, Lord, in the way of your commands, and I will keep your law continually forever and ever. Guide me, Lord, in the way of your commands. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The mother of Jesus and his brothers came to him, but were unable to join him because of the crowd. He was told, Your mother and your brothers are standing outside, and they wish to see you. He said to them in reply, my mother and my brothers are those who hear the word of God and act on it. The Gospel of the Lord. As the basis of my reflection, my homily today, I'd like to start not with... Um, any of the divine revelation we just heard in our readings, uh, is as good and wonderful as both readings were, uh, but rather something from first revelation, uh, that is creation and the world around us, um, which in the tradition is called first revelation, to separate it out from second revelation, which is the explicit handing on and speaking of God uh, to his people. Um, and I'm doing this because just about two and a half hours ago, something in a certain sense important happened, and that was at 9.30 this morning, it was the exact moment of the autumnal equinox, which is that moment in our year uh, where it ceases to be summer and officially becomes autumn. So we're now officially two and a half hours into the season of autumn. And I found myself thinking about this because, you know, the, the pattern, the cycle of the four seasons, we have certain associations with them, right? Spring is the season of, of new growth, right? Of, of newness of life and new growth. Summer is the season of, of, of lushness and kind of abundance, you know, and everything in bloom and vegetables and everything yielding their fruits. And then autumn comes and it's the season of the falling leaves and of, in some ways, death. Um, as the trees and everything else prepares for then the final season, the long, cold, slow slumber of winter. And so I found myself thinking about this idea of, of autumn as kind of the season of death and of dying. Um, and had different ideas kind of bouncing around my brain for where I could go with that in a homily, which isn't too hard. I mean, just two days ago, you know, our second reading for Sunday Mass, St. Paul saying, it is better for me to be away from the body and be with the Lord, and for, to me, death is gain. So there's certainly ways in which I could have gotten a good death homily out of today being the equinox. Happy thing, a death homily, right? But then the, the scientist in me started kind of taking center stage which is sometimes a dangerous thing when it comes to homilies, but I think here it works. 
because it strike, strikes me that when you think about trees and the leaves changing colors and eventually turning brown and falling to the ground, this isn't an image of death. This is what a tree does to preserve life. That during the coming cold weather, if a tree were to keep all of its leaves and be trying to push the sap and the nutrients and everything into those leaves in the midst of the colder temperatures and lack of water and lack of sunlight, that's what would cause the tree to die. The dropping of the leaves is the tree holding on to life. It's the tree sacrificing some of itself for the sake of holding on to what's most important, holding on to its life, and in fact emerging the next spring stronger than ever. So in a different way, the falling of the leaves and the changing of their colors is an image of life. And so I found myself thinking about that image in relation to our spiritual lives. And it strikes me that the lesson there is that in order to hold on to what is most important, in order to hold on to what is most central, sometimes there's things we have to drop and let go of. And it doesn't mean they're bad things. Leaves aren't bad things. Leaves are good things for a tree. But for certain periods of time, even these good things the tree has to let go of in order to preserve what is absolutely most important. And so as we switch over now to being officially in the season of autumn, and as we observe the leaves starting to change colors and some already starting to brown and even fall off, it's worth taking a little inventory of our lives. Not just what are the bad things I'm trying to work on and eliminate. What are the good things in my life that might be getting in the way of the greater goods? What are the good things in my life that now in this window of my life, the Lord is calling me to let go of so that my energy and my focus can be focused on something even more important. I think it's a wonderful way to start autumn, to take some time later on today and just take this question to prayer and sit with it. Ask the Holy Spirit to enlighten you so that, having gone through this exercise, you too might be preparing yourself for an either, even greater abundance of new growth in the weeks and the months ahead. We now bring our prayers and intentions to the throne of our Heavenly Father. We pray for our Holy Catholic Church throughout the world, praying that she might constantly be a beacon of light, truth, justice, and charity, and a true source of hope to many in our world. We pray to the Lord. We pray for those who govern us in public office. We pray to the Lord. Pray for those still impacted by the wildfires out west and the hurricanes threatening the Gulf Coast. We pray to the Lord. We pray for ourselves that we might have the grace to look at the totality of our lives through the lens with which God sees us and to discern well what the Lord is calling us to hold fast to tightly and what he's calling us to let go of. We pray to the Lord. And for all the sick and all the suffering, for the poor, and for any who hold, who carry any heavy crosses this day, 
that Christ might be their comfort, strength, and joy, we pray to the Lord. And for all those intentions we carry with us and hold in the silence of our own hearts. For these needs and all of our faithful departed, we pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your many gifts and graces and blessings, and trusting, Father, in the power of your love and in the divine providence by which you govern all things, we bring you all of our prayers and make them through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive with favor, O Lord, we pray, the offerings of your people, that what they profess with devotion and faith may be theirs through these heavenly mysteries, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For just as through your beloved Son you created the human race, so also through him, with great goodness, you formed it anew. And so it is right that all your creatures serve you, all the redeemed praise you, and all your saints with one heart bless you. Therefore we too extol you with all the angels, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, 
for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Leonard, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed.
You have laid down your precepts to be carefully kept. May my ways be firm in keeping your statutes. As always for communion, we begin with those in the center. Please come forward, single file line, uh, socially distanced. After the center sections, those on the sides, down the side aisles, across the back of the church, and then join the line forward up the center aisle as well. Thank you.
Let us pray. Graciously raise up, O Lord, those you renew with this sacrament, that we may come to possess your redemption, both in mystery and in the manner of our life. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. As always, we need help uh, disinfecting the pews, so if you're not at high risk for COVID and can volunteer to help, we'd love to have you. It's especially important today because we have another event uh, scheduled for the church for 1 o'clock, which is uh, a little ways from now. So if you can help, uh, we appreciate it. All the supplies are up on the front left. Um, Thank you very much uh, for that. And as a help to them, if you're in a pew, please keep the kneeler down when you exit, and that way our disinfectors will know only to disinfect uh, the pews where the kneeler is currently down, rather than having to do every pew in the church. Thank you so much. And as always, we conclude by praying together, St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen.